asleep or something. I'm talking to you! I've got nothing to say to you. As far as I'm concerned, the man did ingle I knew doesn't exist anymore. I don't know how you can live with yourself. Paddy! What are you talking about? Listen, I'm not going into school. Just say that I'm ill or something, will you? What, again? What are you up to? It's none of your business. Shove off. What's going on? Where are you going? I have to take care of something. Cover for me. It's important. If you get caught, we'll both be in trouble. He's right. I've already told you, it's none of your business. You're going to cover for me, right? All right, I'll do it. It's important. Don't mess it up. And don't tell anybody. Tony, I'm sure everything you're telling me is on the level. What I'm saying is I'm considering several options at the moment and your company is definitely on the short list. Listen, Tony, I have to go. But as soon as my plans are clearer, I'll be in touch. OK, bye. Possible business opportunity? Yeah, something like that. And? Laura, if it concerned you, I'd let you know, but it doesn't. Look, perhaps I could be of some help, professionally. Well, it would only be professionally, wouldn't it? I mean, we're hardly close, are we? We could at least be friends, Chris. Followed you, did they? Are you sure? I'm sure. I came across the field. Okay. Oops. Anything to eat? I'm starved. Is it packed lunch? I've got two tins of baked beans, some sardines, biscuits. What about a drink? They turn the water off in here. I've got you that kind of lager you asked for. Any smokes? Jack and Sarah don't smoke. <clears throat> of course they do. I'll get some for next time, eh? I'll try. You got up to open these with? Oh, brilliant. Oh, if the guys that are after me find out I'm here, this will look like a scratch compared to what they'll do next time. They won't find out that you're here. No, but they might follow you. I've already told you. I'm being careful. Oh, well, keep it that way. And mind what you say around the Sugdens, especially near that lad. What's his name? Robert. Yeah, Robert. Jack and Sarah don't know anything. Robert neither. Aye, right, good. Me and you, we're family. Same flesh and blood. Never forget that. And then he marches straight past me without so much as a hello. I mean, it's not as if he could miss me. I suppose I could take it in a bit. It's the trouble with being a size eight. Everything's always too big. Looks me straight in the eye and says, I don't know how you can live with yourself. And marches off all I am mighty. So what do you think? I've got a clue. A tricky one, isn't it? Men, you never know what's going on in the brains. Well, that's because they haven't got any. No, my paddy's dead clever. But he's not your paddy anymore, though, is he? No need to turn to me like that. I mean, what have I done? <sighs> Nothing much. You dump him and then marry your cousin. Amsterdam is a fantastic place. When did you go to Amsterdam? You don't have to have been somewhere to know it's a great place to live. It help. Listen, I'm doing my best to give us a fresh start. Yeah, sure. Is the pain bad? Yes. I'll feel a lot better when we get to Holland. Oh, Dad, can you stop going on about Holland? My arm's here now. Not for long. All we need's a bit of cash. Don't you worry about money, Andy. Leave that to your old man. Shumat always turns up.
night. Where's Cathy now, then? She went back home to get changed. She's got some appointment or summer. Yeah, I think she did mention something about it. Well, she never mentioned anything to me. And another thing I don't understand, why does she want Chris Tate to be taking her wherever it is she's going? Well, why don't you ask Cathy about it? Don't you worry, I will when I see you. You reckon Cathy can trust Chris Tate, then? About as far as you could throw him. Yeah, well, you've got to remember, she's not been herself lately. I think she's still suffering from that bump on the head. She must be, if she's thinking of getting back with Chris Tate. Everything all right? Just braced in ourselves for lunchtime, Rosh. I thought I'd pop in before I go, see if everything's under control. Everything's fine. No problemo. So, um, where you off to, then? Oh, just a bit of shopping in Leeds, Betty. Gonna be out all day, Biff. Can you lock up for me? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, that'd be Chris. Bye. What is that smell? It smells like incredibly expensive French cologne. That would be me. Oh, I thought it were art liniment. <laughs> Pearls before swine, Betty. So where are you going off all dolled up? Another court appearance, is it, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> if you must know, I have a luncheon engagement. Sorry, I, I don't see your name in the reservation book. <laughs> you think I'm mad? I said I was having luncheon. That means going to an establishment of some repute that serves gastronomic delights with fine wines and a convivial and civilised atmosphere. Not some down-market burger joint filled with riff-raff slurping pop. <coughs> Done whatever it is you snuck off to do. Mind your own business. What's the big mystery, anyway? There isn't a big mystery. Just leave me alone. You know, no one can keep a secret around here. I'll find out sooner or later. If you don't keep your nose out of my business, you'll be sorry. I'll make sure you're sorry. Come on, Kel. I'm starving. I've got to finish Paddy's nose before I can go to lunch. I can't even read his writing. What does that say? I was his girlfriend, not his pen pal. He's certainly not his girlfriend now. Paddy? You're not finished yet, Kelly. I'm on the rounds in a minute. Look, it's not my fault you can't write properly. Look, what does that say? A mating pair. Are you going to keep ignoring me or what? Uh, I'll probably be on my rounds all afternoon, Kelly. Paddy, Nan just spoke to you. Oh, take me mobile with me. I don't believe this. Perhaps he's gone deaf. I'll probably be back about half four, all right? Paddy, please, why won't you speak to me? Uh, look, why don't you two sit down and have a good chat? There's no need to, Zoe. Me and Mandy haven't got anything to say to each other. Well, I think you have. Come on, Kelly. Buy your lunch. Free lunch? Great. Well, good luck. Paddy, what's going on? I don't know what you mean. I'm talking about you giving me the silent treatment, not hearing a word that I say. I heard you loud and clear. I don't get it. I got your message. I just didn't like being threatened by the messenger. Messenger? Message? I didn't need to be warned off by a butch. You've done something different with your hair. Yesterday was lovely, but today quite beautiful. It's nice to meet someone who appreciates the effort. Ah. Well, in my line of business, you acquire an eye for fine detail. And mine. Oh. Which is? <sighs> Naughty me. Lady's choice. I'm no connoisseur, Eric. But I do prefer red, though. Oh. Then allow me. Oh, we have the, uh, the Charme Chambertin, please. The, uh, 78. I like a nice, rich burgundy. <laughs> Sounds perfect. So you were saying? Was I? I don't recall. Hmm. About your line of business. Much rather talk about you. Mm. Moment of mystery. I'm intrigued. There's nothing mysterious about me. Must be very successful. 
Whatever makes you think that? Well, that tea set you bought for me the other day wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly cheap. That fair price, but, uh, and uh, finest quality, of mm, course. Worth every penny. Now, I uh, like to treat myself every now and again, so I put a little away for the occasional luxury. Oh, well, little luxuries are what makes life worth living, eh? So, um, what would you recommend? Well, the, uh, the quail's eggs are quite wonderful, and the pâté de foie gras to die for. But the oysters are just... Butch said what? The, uh, it, Mandy, I really don't want to discuss this. I think you should go. I am not going anywhere till we get to the bottom of this. I want to know exactly word for word what our butcher said. Well, don't pretend you don't know. You sent him. I don't know what you're on about. You... I think this was having a right laugh at me. I can't believe I fell for it. For the last time, what did Butch say? That was to stay away from you. That you and him were man and wife now. In every sense. You are? I don't deny it. You mean to say that you think that, that me and Butch are... Lovers. That's exactly what I mean. Butch made it quite clear to me that the marriage had been consummated. Me and Butch? Lovers? So you, you don't deny it then? Or is it just a uh, Dingle's custom that you, you sleep with your cousin? Well, <laughs> I mean, Mandy, I, as a vet, I, I must recommend that you don't try interbreeding. <laughs> Dingle, you're dead. Mmm. Very nice, too. Mm. You're getting the vanilla. Bit of oak. Not sure. I'm getting a bit tipsy, though. <laughs> Nonsense. You haven't seen the bottle I've ordered for the entree. What? Another bottle? I'll just have a glass. We can leave the cars here, take a taxi. What's the problem? You really meant it when you said you enjoy the finer things in life, Eric. Yeah. There's any room for the very best in Eric Pollard's world, Stella. I simply have a passion for things of quality. And have you found any? Two, actually. One of which is seated opposite me. And the other? On the wall to your left. Excuse me. Can I see the proprietor, please? All right, Mandy. Hey, this ham is fabulous. Do you want a bit? Stand up. Come on, I'm eating me dinner. Hey, all right, all right, all right. I'm stood up. Now what? Now I'm going to flatten you. Hey, Mandy, come on. What's all this about? This is about you speaking to Paddy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's about you speaking to Paddy and telling him that me and you are a proper married couple. You also told him that we're bedding down together. Did I? Yes, you did, and I hate you for it. Mandy, I... Don't, don't touch me. Just get out of my sight. Monday, I was only trying to protect you. From what? From Paddy. I saw the way he was looking at you. So you lying to him and threatening to kick his head in is doing me a favour? Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. Me and Paddy will never get back together. It's finished. Over. Right then. So I'm not having you going round this village telling people that we're sharing a bed. You're going to Paddy to tell him you made it all up. I am. Yeah, you are. And you best do it by the time I get back. Or else. Mr Pollard, I'm simply not interested in selling the painting. Uh, indeed, I, I can sympathise with your attachment. However, that uh, particular wall doesn't show this work off to its full advantage. You see, watercolours such as this need natural light. You think so? Oh, yes, absolutely. 
Well, I don't know much about these things. <laughs> Not really my field. Uh, I'll tell him what we could do. I have a rather lovely oil, poppies and sunshine. It'd be perfect for here. I'm sure we could work out a part exchange. Go on. Well, with a difference of value, you could let us have this wonderful meal in the house. I'm not sure. That painting's been part of this restaurant for a number of years. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to make up your mind pretty quickly on this. There's another party uh, interested in the oil. Well, ah, the choice is yours, eh? Right, where were we? It's a deal. Oh, marvelous. <laughs> I'll send one of the lads over with a painting this afternoon. Thank you. Bon appétit. Thank you very much indeed. When you set your sights on something, you don't give up, do you, Eric? I don't. Pour wine. There's no point looking at me like that. It's not my fault. You're appearing for Kim's defence, and it's not your fault? I've been summoned. I didn't exactly volunteer. Everything that woman's done. Now I'm being turned over by my own sister. Oh, you know that's not true. Do I? The sooner this is all over, the better. We can get on with our lives again. Speaking of which, I'm considering going back into the haulage business. When are you going to get out of Dad's shadow? Become your own man. Forget the haulage business. Forget home farm. Start your own business. Get a life. Maybe even a love life. All in good time. Let's just see if your evidence can keep Kim out of jail first. Right. Yes. It's a work of art. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a work of art. Anna George? Uh, uh, Eric Pollard. Yeah, fine, thank you. Uh, listen, you know you wanted me to keep an eye out for some more works of Nathan Summers. Yes, um, I required a particularly fine example of his work, and knowing that you wanted first refusal, uh, not that you will refuse it when you see it. Uh, uh, all right, uh, see you in a yeah, couple of hours. Right, OK, fine. Oh, uh, George, don't forget your checkbook. <laughs> you enjoy every minute of it, don't yes, you? Yes, I love it. And who wouldn't take exchanging a hundred and fifty pound oil for a seven hundred pound watercolour with a wonderful meal thrown in? Um, well, of course, I'll be splitting the proceeds with our friend at the restaurant. You see, everyone's a winner. There is one thing I'd like to know. Far away. How did you get into this business? Uh, I used to be an auctioneer. You see, the trick is all in knowing who are the buyers and who are the sellers. And you put yourself in between? Mm. You make it sound so simple. Mm. You inspired me. Is that right? Mm. Well, I uh, I really must go. Oh, uh, must you? I've really enjoyed myself. Thank you for a lovely lunch <laughs> and a very entertaining time. It's been quite an education. Uh, we must do it again soon. At least uh, let me have your phone number. You're here most of the time, aren't you? Mostly. Then I'll know where to find you. Playing hard to get, eh? So, did you tell him then? Who? Paddy. Who else? You haven't, have you? You've been sat there all day just feeling sorry for yourself! I'm not feeling sorry for myself! Good! What's so bad about me, Mandy? Hey? Why does everybody think that no one could ever love me? But... Why don't you love me? I love you, Mandy! I've always loved you! Don't say another word! Mandy! Why can't we be like a proper man and wife? You and me! I know you're stupid, but not mad! I could make you happy, Mandy! Why don't you give me a chance? I love you. Why can't you see that? See? There's nothing to see. Don't touch me, but you're making my skin crawl. But one day... No! You don't get it. I don't love you like that. 
and I never will. Never! Where'd you get him from? Lad at school. Good lad. What else you got? What am I supposed to do with these? Pop them in the microwave? I didn't think. That's the thing, son. You've got to keep thinking. One false move from you and I'm done for. I've got to keep your wits about you. I'm trying my best. What about cash? I ain't got any yet. I'll be getting some soon for my paper round. And I've got some birthday money in my savings account. How much? Not 50 quid. Well, that's not going to get us very far, is it? It's all I've got. I'm sorry. I'm just a bit jumpy, you know. I just want the two of us to get away from here as soon as possible. You idiot. You said you weren't forward. I wasn't. Take a look. And keep down. It's a man and a woman. And? The man's wearing overalls. Not police, then? No. There must have been kids over handles. Let me know when you've got the part and you can come back and finish the job. There's nothing to steal, anyway. This is a great house. I can't understand why no one wants to buy it. Damage done. I'll uh, leave you to get on with it then. Oh, you finished already? Yes. Yeah, that should hold you get the proper parts. Good lad. Oh, you really kept your cool. Oh, I'm proud of you. 